Kevin Kimberlin is a founder and chairman of Spencer Trask. Throughout his career, Kevin has played a pivotal role in founding, or first funding, some of the most profound discoveries in science, technology that have changed the healthcare landscape and revolutionized global communications. Keith McMillan. Keith McMillan has started and sold multiple technology companies focused on sensors and audio. A passion for music has guided his work with sensors and signal processing. He's considered the inventor of the modern violin and numerous other musical firsts. The need for accurate and robust sensors that can adapt to any geometry has been realized in his latest company, Bebop Sensors. Kevin, you were at ground zero when all of this started. Uh, what was it like? What did you think? In, as far as wireless mobile telephony, voice and data services. And how did you foresee at that time when so many people were so skeptical uh, how it would unfold to where we are today? Here was something that I called the phone for the rest of the world. The, the vision was uh, today very obvious, but then it was very radical, obviously. Uh, it was a, a voice and data phone that pocket size, and had the ability to interface with computers. And I want to tell you, there was Motorola, there was AT&T, and there was this little company called Millicom. When we launched this company, the big objective was to get something that was not connected to the car, and ended up teaming up with a two-person startup in England to build the first pocket phone. And this was in 1986. The intelligent version of that phone came out in 1987. So exactly 30 years ago, the first uh, voice and data pocket phone came out on the market. It was a vision and just a handful of people, five people at Telecom. Your smart fabric sensor technology is game changing. It enables us to immerse ourselves in the digital realm. What did you think? at the time at KMI when all of these people were coming to you for six years, you held them off uh, from capitalizing on your smart technology. What did you think of that? I definitely get into technology <clears throat> through the artistic door. Uh, when I saw at the age, uh, I guess 11, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, I was fascinated with uh, Dave Bowman playing chess with the computer. I created the electric violin, and that did plug into computers, and I built them for Laurie Anderson, Jean Lepani, built a cello for Yo-Yo Ma, and about 10 years ago, I said, well, I should build a modern violin bow uh, to complete the ensemble, and I was, it was a Bluetooth bow, uh, and I was looking for a cylindrical sensor uh, to go around the grip. And yeah, about four years ago, uh, these companies started approaching me. I still was operating a music business um, and felt that these were interesting projects, so I started doing them. And about four years ago, spun it out to Bebop Sensors, and to this day, Bebop is the only company in the world with smart fabric technology and it really has become quite a, a primary and necessary component of connectivity. We're 100% in contact with fabric. We wear it, we're sitting on it, we walk on it. So it is a very logical place to deploy sensors. So we have been able to make products that uh, go into clothing, uh, go into automobile seats so we can understand when to deploy airbags and when not to, and at what strength. I've, I've learned that you're involved with General Electric, with GE Predix. What this allows you to do is, uh, it's an app composer. It allows you to take the information and create your own app, uh, and, and you don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to spend months of effort to do this. You can be a, a you know, a normal executive 
is busy and, and be able to get functionality at your um, uh, at the tip of your fingers and information at the tip of your fingers so that you can make very quickly you can understand what this tool this giant predicts engine might be able to do for you and your part of the world what have you found to be um, common from your past companies and, and what have you found to be different in, in the pursuit of Internet of Things? Um, well, they're almost diametrically opposed in that uh, tools for artists are, uh, if they're working well, provide some unboundedness, some ability to create and be spontaneous. Um, whereas tools that are used for safety devices, uh, defense, uh, medical, uh, have an incredibly thick, headache-inducing set of goals, requirements, and test procedures. Connectivity continues to be the one thing that shows up in every project. And the Projects that are the most interesting and likely to have the most uh, volume and impact are the things that I mentioned earlier, items that we carry with us constantly. What are the biggest obstacles that you see right now in, in order for people to really capitalize on what you've created? We're able to make extremely accurate uh, data gloves with haptic feedback uh, that we'll be able to sell at uh, Costco for under 100 bucks. And AR, VR, uh, whatever aspect of it we're going to name, uh, still does want input, and uh, that's somewhat lacking. Uh, the cameras that are out there are good, but still suffer from problems. If, you know, fingers are obscured, there's just not a whole lot you can do about it, and they're relatively slow. So that's a good example of where the data created by an individual through fabric devices uh, gives an immediate response to the environment that they're participating in. Where the Internet of Things is going, where GE's Predicts is going, where the mobile everything is going, your clothing, your floor, everything's going to be wirelessly connected to the Internet and the data, and we're all going to be connected. So, I mean, if you think that through, you know, five... 10 years from now, it's really going to be an internet of ecosystems that, you know, whether you're a company that, that's, that's coming all the way from the innovator to the supply chain to the manufacturer and, um, and, and the process in, internal the accounting finance control uh, to the distribution and marketing of the customer, one long continuum is going to be totally connected, real-time wirelessly connected. So it's what, what, what we think of as the internet of ecosystems. Well, both of you gentlemen are perfect living examples, in my opinion, of the greatest way to predict the future is to invent it. And so I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to meet you, speak with you, get to know you, and very happy with all that you've shared with our audience here today. Thank you very much.